Hello, I'm Bradley and welcome to my channel. First things first, if you're new here, please subscribe. You don't have to, of course, but it really helped me out in where I'm trying to get my channel to be. Okay, so this is a topic which is very, very dear to my heart. This week, it is Deafness Awareness Week. Now, a lot of my subscribers will know um, that I have hearing related problems. I have deafness. I am deaf in my left ear and I have a slight hearing loss on my right ear. I wear a Bycroft system, um, which basically means that I have mimicked hearing from my good side through a hearing aid over onto my deaf side. So I wear a hearing aid in both ears. Um, very comfortable, very sleek, very good and yeah no complaints but i have tried a whole host of all different hearing uh, um hearing loss devices you could say as well as hearing aids so i've tried something known as a pocket talker i've tried different devices around the house to be able to help me um be more included in uh just general life around around the home um and deafness is i think a thing which Unfortunately, it's something which a lot of us don't necessarily wish to talk about. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Deafness, hearing related problems. So this week, always the first week of May. So this year, of course, from the 1st to the 7th of May is Deafness Awareness Week. Now, of course, if you're watching this and you're thinking, well, I haven't got any hearing problems, but somebody else in my family has, then it's really, really great to just have a little bit of an insight on not necessarily always what that person goes through, because at the end of the day, that does not change the person of who they are just because they have a hearing related problem. And of course, that is like with any disability, because having a hearing condition, having a hearing issue, it is a disability. It does affect you on a daily basis. And it's a sense. So it really does have a huge impact on your life. Number one, if it's not um if it's not diagnosed, if you don't have any support with it, if you don't have any uh, help, or just generally if you don't talk about it, it becomes a huge issue and it becomes something which can really take over your life. Now, another thing which deafness can also intrude on is, of course, somebody's confidence. Now, I'm 29 years of age. I'm going to be 30 in a couple of months time. And most of my life, I've had a hearing issue. So from a young age, I had a lot of, and I say even before I was a teenager, I had a lot of problems in relation to hearing. Growing up as a very small child, um, as a toddler into a small child, I had, um, I'm one of a twin, and both my twin and I had lots of hearing, um, not hearing, lots of uh, ear infections, lots of sort of colds, lots of sort of horrible um, viral kind of things which was always affecting our ears so we were on antibiotics and this particular um, sort of um, drops in the ear that type of thing quite a lot so it was quite common growing up we had that I've now learned that having that back then unfortunately didn't necessarily help my level of hearing loss and my declining hearing as it's gone on as I've got a little bit older on top of that um, I'm very over the moon to report that my brother has no hearing uh, issues at all and his hearing is absolutely perfect um unfortunately i went on to develop a little bit more um of an issue and a huge issue um with many ears disease which if somebody doesn't necessarily know what that is it's the inner part of the ear some changes inside um in the middle ear um and that's all to do with pressure sort of fluid um and unfortunately damage to that ear so that's what's happened in my left side now they can't guarantee that that's the reason why that's happened because i don't believe there is any definitive test which can tell you that a person has many ears but it is a constant sort of rigmarole of appointment after appointment sitting in front of consultant after specialist and just literally going through the symptoms you've had um now for many years i had real vertigo attacks really severe and i still do get vertigo on a daily basis, I would say to some degree. So whether that just be a slight once with the whoosh of my head off to one side, or whether it be where I have a day where it's really, really bad with it. So it's certainly a thing which affects me on a daily basis, as well as my hearing loss issues as well. So many years, of course, is um, a really impounding uh, condition to have. And I know a lot of people who have got hearing conditions have a hearing loss. They don't necessarily have balance issues as well as uh, sort of um, 
the other horrible things which come along with that, so sort of sickness, um, the sort of the, the severe fatigue, the sort of horrible attacks which come with vertigo. Unfortunately, I've had them really, really severe where it's took me unconscious and it's made me have seizure-like happenings to me, which has been absolutely horrendous, which my parents have seen. And um, bless them, they are my absolute world and they've got me through all of my uh, my journey of my hearing-related problems, as well as my dear Nan, my mum's mum, who sadly my heartbreak. I don't have her no more. But when I was starting to have hearing condition problems, she was with me and my huge support throughout all of my journey and especially growing up with hearing problems. Now, unfortunately, hearing loss is different for everybody. There is not just one thing which we can all take and we can all say, do you know what, we're absolutely fine. Hearing loss is a very, very personal journey and how it affects us is very individual. So, for example, I have had, when I first started having <coughs> Excuse me. When I first started having problems with my hearing, which is really sad, I can't actually remember having perfect hearing um, because it's been all of my life, to be quite honest with you. Um, I've had I've had all sorts of uh, sort of appointments and treatments and every sort of type of hearing aid you can think of. Um, and I've now found a really fantastic system. So to get the right support, that's not always easy. That's really not always easy. Um, but breaking this right down, so we, we've spoken about where my hearing uh, loss problems started, and unfortunately my hearing's declined as I've got a little bit older, um, to the point where I'm completely deaf in my left ear now, and I've got some um, hearing loss on my good side. But what do you do if you start to notice somebody who you think may not be having as good as hearing of what they did have, or perhaps you're thinking, is that person completely okay? Well, the first thing I would always say to notice is, do you feel that you're having to speak a bit louder to somebody? Because for me, if I haven't got my hearing aids in, that, that naturally happens, of course, because if you're not hearing, then you're not necessarily hearing how loud you're talking. For me, one of the first things I can kind of always remember is in conversations, um, missing certain sounds and getting jumbled up in conversations. So, for example, um, different letters, for example, I, I struggle with without hearing aids in, I certainly did when it all first started. So things like th, in sh, in s, in different words like that, and sometimes even with hearing aids in, if somebody's not looking at me, it's really, really difficult for me to differentiate what they're actually saying. Um, phones, it's quite difficult for me to sometimes speak on the phone without that person being in front of me. Um, I would always say what you can do if you're noticing that your loved one or somebody is starting to have problems, and perhaps they don't even know, because of course it's a sense, it's 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 difficult. It's sometimes difficult to determine if it's perhaps a bit of a cold and your ears are a little bit blocked, or if something's really starting to change. So, for example, if you're if you're with somebody and you're finding that actually you've just answered something, but that wasn't the question I asked you. I think that's one of the big things, which I would, I, I still do. Um, but of course, a lot of people, that can just happen naturally anyway. But I think if you've called somebody or you're in your, perhaps you're in your home or perhaps you've gone out um, and you've had, you've shouted somebody and perhaps they haven't heard you, they haven't turned around. Or if you're at home and you've not got the reaction, what you've expected from that person, or perhaps they've given, I know I do often give a completely different random answer and the person looks at me much to say, no, that's not what I asked. Um, it's all of those kind of telltale signs that something isn't particularly quite right with somebody's hearing. Now, the first thing to do is not to panic, because if you stress, if you panic, and I know it's easier said than done, it's going to make hearing related problems worse. So I suffer with something called tinnitus, which in Deafness Awareness Week, tinnitus can be through damage to the ears, that can be through stress, that can be through a whole host of all different reasons. For me, I've had it um, again, most of my life tinnitus, my sound. So it's often for people, it's a ringing sound or a high pitched sound in the ear, which you can hear over everything. Um, now studying at school and for my exams and for interviews and for work, I do get it regularly. I get it regularly and I've had really bad times of it in my life where it's really taken over. And I'll be honest, it's been really difficult to manage and sometimes it still is. So it's one of those things which is an ongoing um, thing which you you try to you try to build coping mechanisms. So for example, if somebody starts to think they hear a noise in their ear, always be receptive to that. That actually that could well be tinnitus. So I think 
always be supportive in those situations. I have been in so many um, different situations where unfortunately people have been really rude to me about my hearing. Um, I've had people um, in my workplace, customers, be really rude. Um, I've had people really point out that I've got a hearing problem. And the worst thing in the world I've had is when somebody starts speaking to me like this as soon as they realize I have a hearing issue. And I really do not like that because the thing is, at the end of the day, you do not need to treat somebody with a hearing problem any different than as you would treat somebody else with without a hearing problem. The thing you do need to do is you do need to be patient with somebody. You need to look at somebody when you're talking to them with a hearing problem. So for Deafness Awareness Week, what we've just kind of spoke about there is if you're if you're thinking and you're watching this, you think, actually, do you know what? One of my friends is a bit like that, or, or sometimes they don't always necessarily answer in the right place, or perhaps sometimes they get a bit mixed up, because I know I get mixed up with sounds and in conversations and things, particularly if it's new people, where I haven't had that chance to build that rapport to know, because of course, different pronunciation of words, different accents, um, it can be really difficult and really, really challenging with somebody um, with a hearing condition. If you don't wear hearing aids, I know, for example, I try to battle with my hearing loss without wearing hearing aids, because at the time. It was a thing for me where I really struggled with confidence about it as well. But my amazing mum and my and my dad and my nan would always say to me that, do you know what, it doesn't change the amazing person you are. And I always remember to that. And my mum was the first one, bless her heart, which said that to me. And and that, I always try to remember that if I go for a really, really difficult time with it. Because sometimes, do you know what, as much as I can sit here and say to you that I'm at a point now where I've accepted it, do you know what, some days I still don't. Some days when I put my hearing aids in and then I turn them on and I get that kind of effect that what I can hear without and what I can hear with, without my hearing aids, I miss out on all this sort of the rustling, the small sounds in life, those type of things which you'll take for granted. And then when I've got my hearing aids in and, and sometimes it still knocks me to the six to think that actually, wow, this is how much of my hearing is gone. Um, and it's difficult. It really is difficult. I mean, sometimes I think in these type of events throughout the year where we say an awareness week, that it drives the, that sort of awareness for just one week. But of course, people with hearing related conditions, it's a lifelong issue. Unfortunately, there isn't something out there. There's hearing aids. But please bear in mind that a hearing aid does not perfectly correct the issue. It is a coping mechanism. It is a tool to help somebody with a hearing condition be more included in life. It helps them hear. It helps their brain be more stimulated with communi communication. It helps the well-being. It helps everything focus and function more better because you can hear. Without hearing, you're isolated. It takes your confidence. You don't necessarily hear everything what's being said to you. You don't necessarily feel involved. You do feel like, I find, with a hearing condition, and if I've been out before and my hearing aid stopped working, I haven't got batteries with me, which has happened a lot, by the way, it feels like almost I'm looking in a, for a window in life. And very often I have an amazing family where they know when things like this happens. So with my hearing issues, um, I can never have really anybody walking on my deaf side. So I always have to have uh, I always have to have somebody on my good side. And um, my twin brother is amazing for it. He knows exactly um, when I've not heard something because, of course, I'm guilty of doing this. My mum and my nan would tell you as well that I'm fake that I've heard. And I'll be there smiling and I'll say yes or no or anything like that at all. And sometimes I've been caught out with that because I've, I've said yes in the wrong place and I've said no in the wrong place as well. Um, but you know what? I think if you if you know that somebody struggles with that issue, the best thing you can do is talk to them about it. Talk to them about it. Have patience. Always make sure that you look at the person's face when you're talking to them. If, you, if you're noting that somebody's possibly starting to struggle a little bit with their hearing, number one, talk to them about it. Okay. Have patience. And if you've got to have the conversation several times, because I know that my parents, my nan had to have the conversations with me many, many times before I'd start to accept that actually there was something wrong with my hearing. And they would often talk to me and help me kind of with the whole acceptance of it as well, because it is a huge thing. And for a young person, you know, my heart is always in my mouth, literally, when I see somebody with blaring music going on in their ears, because I didn't lose my hearing through doing any neglectful things to my hearing at all. And when I see some people neglecting their hearing, it's not fun to wear hearing aids. It doesn't correct the issue. 
you can never ever get your hearing back 100% once it's gone. Now, of course, I know there's different studies and there's um, incredible sort of treatments out there, as such as cochlear implants, bar hearing aids, which is a bone anchored hearing aid system, um, all things like that, but never to kind of switch back on natural hearing. Um, I know there's studies out there for stem cell um, sort of treatments and things like that, but I think we are decades away from that ever happening and probably not ever in my lifetime either. Um, but hearing loss is a very, very, it's a serious topic. It really, really is. And I would urge anybody, if you're noticing somebody is perhaps not always answering your questions in the right place, or perhaps they're not necessarily finding, let's say, for example, if someone says that this is my dad picked me up on this, okay, when this all first started happening um, many, many years ago when I was very, very young, that if there was something funny going on or somebody said a joke or anything, I would never be laughing or I'd never find it funny. Now, I don't really have too much of a sense of humour, but I am always the last person in the room to pick up on something funny because simply I just have not heard it. So if that's happening to somebody, or perhaps if you're having a conversation with somebody and you're thinking, actually, I'm not sure this person's actually got completely what I've just said to them. It's not because they haven't grasped it. It's because simply they may not have heard you. Now, I know that can happen to the best of us, but if it is a hearing condition and you're a bit worried or you're a bit concerned, talk to them about it. Because having hearing aids, it's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. But getting that journey going of talking to a health professional your family doctor about hearing problems can potentially stop the issues from getting any worse. It can stop and help any negative effects to your well-being. Um, and of course, if you've got a hearing condition, it can make you feel down. It can make you feel bleak to think that I know when I, I was very, very young, I wasn't even I think I must have been. I mean, I started when I was small as a toddler, I had issues then. But I think even sort of in my very, very early teenage years, when my hearing was declining, um, I would often think to myself, wow, I'd look in the mirror and think, you know what, goodness, I'm growing and I'm developing, but yet there's part of me up here which is not functioning right. And I, and I, that took me, and some days I still look at myself and think that. There's two types of hearing loss I understand you can have. Um, it's uh, bone, uh, I think it's something like bone um, hearing loss. The, the bones in the ear have caused the hearing loss. Um, mine is sensory hearing loss, um, which is um, all related to nerves. So switching off on the brain, I understand. Um, and and I, I remember so many occasions um, that there was there was times when the hearing aids might not work for me. I and mean, I remember they tried a hearing aid on my deaf ear when I had some hearing there. And as the hearing loss progressed, unfortunately, um, the hearing aid was no use for me anymore. That was a really dark time for me. I know I lost a lot of hearing in 2010. Um, and I've had, and I've had a bit of a decline in recent years as well. But I was going for hearing tests every six months. But you know, what? in the end, and I, and I see the consultant yearly who looks after me with my hearing problems. And I've dealt with the same hearing specialist, um, ENT specialist and the audiologist right from when my hearing was fine when I was very, very young. So they've seen this deterioration, which in some ways is really, really good because they know me as a person. They know how it affects me. But do you know what? It's, it's hard. It's hard. It, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy. I'm not going to sit here and say that. So I think for Deafness Awareness Week, it's just an actually sort of, number one, if you're aware of somebody and you think that actually this person might have an issue here, talk to them about it. But the next huge thing is inclusivity. Just because somebody has a hearing issue, it doesn't change them as a person. In fact, actually, somebody who has a hearing problem some people may be a bit concerned to carry on the way they were or communicating with this person. Do so. Because somebody who has a hearing issue is actually, nine times out of ten, a much better communicator than somebody without a hearing issue. Because we have to be so much more aware of that actually we might not have heard. So we have to pay that much more attention so to ensure that we actually get the full picture of something. So actually somebody who has a hearing issue will be very aware of what they can and cannot do in regards to picking up on things in a conversation. And actually they will have different coping mechanisms. Do you know what? Subconsciously, they will constantly be looking at your face. Do you know what? If someone asks me, can you lip breathe? No, I can't. But actually I must be able to because 
I have to look at somebody's face when I'm talking to them. And honestly, if I haven't got my hearing aids, then I'm absolutely terrible. But if I'm looking at somebody's face, I can get by. And if somebody's with me, I can get by. So it is a huge, huge topic, which I could talk and talk and talk and talk a lifetime on. There are, of course, societies out there. There are websites out there. And my first thing I would always say is, do you know what? If you're concerned with your hearing, perhaps you've watched this and you're a bit concerned with your hearing. Be careful with what you search for online, because there are some scary things on there. But there is also some amazing support out there as well. So I think, number one, there is the, I think it's the, um, is it R-N-I-D, which I think is the Royal National Institute for Death, for Death People, I believe, which I'm not keen on that term. Deafness, I'm not really keen on that term at all. Um, but it's really, really good. And actually, if you have a look for helping aids um, or pieces of equipment out there, there are loads of pieces of equipment out there. Literally, just do a simple Google search, okay? Um, hearing loss equipment or something of that nature. And there are sites. Be careful with who you shop with. There is pieces of equipment out there which can make your life easier. For example, um, there's pieces of equipment which can help you um, hear the phone much more easier. There are alarm clocks out there with vibration pads which go into the pillow so you can hear. Because I can never hear an alarm clock when I need to be up at a super, super early time or perhaps in the middle of the night. Um, there are things, for example, where you can hear doorbells, where you have like a wristband and it vibrates. Um, I always have to have the subtitles on a TV, but sometimes that isn't enough. So I know I've had things like before where it's almost like, um, um, in a type of like an inclusive speaker which goes in front of the TV and if you're wearing your hearing aids on sort of like a loop cycle it can help you um, be involved much more in the activity of watching television and picking out things much much more. There is a whole host of different equipment out there to be able to include and to really enhance that inclusivity on our loved ones, our friends, our families. Just because you have a hearing problem doesn't mean to say that you're any less of the person you are. In fact actually it makes you more aware of just how good and all the great things you do have just because you may have one thing which isn't so great you have so many more fantastic great qualities about you it really does make you delve in a little bit more and look for them and it just gives you a much more greater appreciation of the great and wonderful things we do have in this life so deafness awareness week let's get talking about it because at the end of the day all disabilities are yes a disability but they make us who we are and that is only one of us just think there's only one of you in this world and you are incredible. And just because you've got a hearing issue or just because your loved one has got a hearing issue or your friend or whoever's got a hearing issue, they're still just that incredible person. OK, so I really hope you've enjoyed me being quite open over a bit of it, jumbled a bit all over the place of it. But I've got a lot to talk about when it comes to deafness, hearing loss and that great awareness of all of those things as well. And lastly, hearing loss and deafness doesn't just affect older people. It's a natural progression that our hearing doesn't necessarily stay the same, but you don't just lose your hearing. There are young people out there as well. And do you know what? Don't shy away from it. Be proud of it. It is who you are and you've got a lot to offer and you're an amazing person. So on that note, I really do hope that you've enjoyed this clip. Um, it's been an absolute privilege to be able to share it uh, as well and share my experience with you. And if you'd like to ask me a question, then please do so. Please come back to me. Nothing is sort of off off, to, off um, topic, if you want to ask me absolutely anything at all, please do come back to me. It's an absolute privilege and I'll do my utmost best to come back to you as quickly as I can. OK, so until next time, thank you very much for being here and take great care and look after your hearing. And remember, if you're noticing that with somebody or yourself, talk to somebody, start the conversation, start the ball rolling. OK, bye for now. God bless and I'll be seeing you real soon. Bye.